Hi everybody, Lori here for Simon Says Stamp. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be a part of the five ways, five days. And my topic is, of course, ink blending. I love it so much. So the first thing I want to talk about is storage. These are the adorable new Simon Says Stamp storage pouches. They're so cute, so handy. A great alternative to store and to tote around your ink blender brushes or your sponges. Now these are some of the new Simon Says Stamp blender brushes and I have these caddies that hold blender brushes. Uh, I used to have my Gina K blender brushes in it but I'm trying it out with these new Simon Says Stamp brushes and they fit like it was meant to be. Now the colored handles are adorable. I love the little paw print. I also love that there's like a plastic lid on the brush and there's two different sizes of brushes there's the large and the small they're exactly the same color handle same plastic lid beautiful brush quality and um, i think that lid is a really unique feature for if you want to like take them and go somewhere you can put that lid on and they're not going to contaminate one another so i like these caddy uh, for storage i also have the simus stamp grid paper pad which is really handy when it comes to ink blending and I'll show you why when we get to going. Okay, I'm going to be using these two stencil sets. This is the A2 mask. It's like A2 rectangles and I believe you get four sizes of A2 rectangles and you get the outside and you also get the inner of the rectangle and then I'm going to start with the Simon's Stamp tape runner to tape down temporarily a panel of white cardstock to that grid paper pad. I'm gonna start with the largest rectangle mask and you see the little registration marks that helps you to line up your panel evenly so you get that perfect little border. I'm gonna end up trimming that off later anyway. So I'm gonna to get to blending starting with Lemon Zing. I'm gonna be using all Simon's to Stamp inks and these are new blender brushes. Anytime I'm starting with a new blender brush or even a blender sponge, I find the new ones can be temperamental until you get them well loved, well seasoned. You gotta be really careful. It's very easy to get splotchy results with new brushes and new sponges. So every time I ink up my brush, I always go off on the paper grid mat and get that first initial it's like a really hot, intense color, and that will cause smudging or splotchiness. So always go off on the side first, and then go in with a very light hand. You can always build up the intensity, but you can't take it away if you're coming in too hot. Okay, so I start with a light hand, working it in. Okay, and I'm not really trying to get super even coverage. I'm leaving the middle kind of light. So there's mask number one putting on the next size which is just a little bit smaller I'm gonna pull it down to the bottom right corner every time I add a mask I'm gonna butt it down into the bottom right corner creating kind of a unique geometric design next color is orange slush does anybody like orange slushes out there I don't mind them my kids love them new brush again so I'm being very careful one thing I have noticed about orange inks across all brands they're very intense anytime i use orange you got to be careful so you really want to get that excess first initial ink off on the side and then go in with a light hand i find you need very little ink when you're working with orange and it doesn't matter what brand i don't know what it is something about orange formulation is a uh, high intensity so working my way around the perimeter i'm not trying to be too much color in the center as you can see mostly just around the top left right you know and i leave that bottom corner because i'm going to work build the colors as i add the masks following me okay there's mask number two and now we're going to add the third one which is one size smaller i'm butting that up down in the bottom right corner and i'm using post-it tape to hold down my stencils or masks and the next color is teeny bikini i love these names okay so another new blender brush and i am using the ink stand to hold my ink pad steady very handy tool that way you don't have to hold it with your hand it's just locked and loaded in the ink stand and i'm working my way 
with teeny bikini. Do you remember the days when you could wear a teeny bikini? <laughs> those are those are long, long days ago. Okay, so here we go. That one didn't take much ink either. As you work your way to the darker colors, you need less and less ink. Okay, this is the smallest one of the A2 rectangle mask. We're using, what's this called? Rosy Apple. It's kind of a pop and cherry red, really. And I'm using that same blender brush that I used on Teeny Bikini. You don't need much on this one because it's, it's a real poppin' cherry. It's a real poppin' rosy apple. And given a little bit. Now this one I'm going to add a little bit more on the right because this will end out our design. This design really appeals to my clean, graphic, geometric love and heart. It kind of creates movement and color. And there you have the panel. Now I'm going to show you a uh, little bit of cleaning tips. I love the Simon Says Stamp spray cleaner. Works great for stamps. It also works great for cleaning the ink off your stencils. Now I noticed the Simon Says Stamp ink is strong and it can be hard to clean off just with water, but this stamp cleaner cleans off perfectly. I use it on my grid mat. I use it on my Misty. I use it on my stamps. Now this is the positively everything tool. And it works great for cleaning your blender brushes. I have some lukewarm soapy water, just dish soap, and you can rub it up against that silicone mat and it will clean your brushes. And this is great if you don't have a lot of brushes and you need to clean them to use it on a different color. Um, now I just give it a once over on that positively everything tool and then I dry it off with a paper towel. And you can see here how no color is coming off of that. There's no longer orange coming off of that brush. I'll show you with these next two. When I do this on my paper towel, you can see the red coming off. But when I get it on that Positively Everything tool with the soapy water, clean as a whistle. And then what I'll do is set these back into that um, brush caddy to just let them dry. And then I'll do one more with the yellow brush. I don't do this a lot, mostly because I'm lazy, but it does work. And pretty effortlessly too, I might add. Okay, so you can see now when I rub that on the paper towel, no longer does any yellow ink come off of it. So you could use that for a different color if need be. Maybe a different shade of yellow and you don't want to, you know, mix the different colors. Okay, so there is one way to clean your brushes. Now I'm going to trim this panel, but um, I got some excess ink along the border. But on the back of it, there's a bit of that um, excess dot adhesive and it makes it hard to slide it around on your guillotine trimmer. So this um, adhesive eraser is probably one of my most used little doodads and I had to share it. It gets really gunky around the edge when you use it. Here's how I clean it up. I just cut off the gunk with scissors and I use this adhesive eraser probably on every project I create. I also use it to clean up my grid mat. I like to keep my grid mat nice and clean looking and um, just works great. I use it as much as I use my bone folder and that is on every project. So I'm just trimming off that white border because I'm going to pop this up on a white card base. So I, I love the guillotine. Works like a charm. It never lets me down and it's always straight and parallel makes you look like you mean business. So popping this up on a white card base and then we're going to move on to uh, the sentiment. I'm using some of this Concord 9th silver metallic foil cardstock. I'm using the U Shine word die. I'm going to die cut this using my little Alta New mini blossom die cutter. I've been using this so much lately. I don't know why I had it down in the basement. When I have it on my desk and I see it and I use it and I really do appreciate the handiness of it. So I did the U out of silver foil and then the rest of it just white cardstock. And I'm going to stack up that U. You know how I say dimension is life. And I love to stack up word dies. It really makes them su substantial and to pop. And to stack them up I'm using some Simon's Stamp Craft Tacky Glue. I've got my little tweezers there and I like to put little dots, just a little dot that way you don't get too much and it doesn't ooze out the sides and chap your khaki. So I like to do at least three out of white, 
stacking those up and then I'll top it off with the silver one and um, the thing that's great about liquid adhesive is that it gives you a couple minutes to slide it around and get it perfectly aligned liquid adhesive is great for slipping and sliding to get perfect placement and I take the Simonsa stamp acrylic block press it down let it sit and hold the pieces together now I'm gonna flip over the silver stacked up word die put a little bit of uh, tacky glue on there and then I will adhere it to the white backer this is great because the U is silver and the shine is kind of open and then for just a little extra added something I'm using the detail leaf cluster die with vellum I'm going to take this off camera run it through my die cutting machine and now you have a little vellum and then you have your word die now I put some foam adhesive on the back of this stacked up word die I didn't put any adhesive on the vellum I just held it down with my sentiment and I trimmed off any of that excess cluster last thing to do is embellish now I'm going to be using some of these little little things from Lucy these ones are called bubbles I also love the rainstones the rainstones are crystal clear these bubbles have a a smidge of iridescent to them I'm adhering them with the craft tacky glue and there you have card number one I love the vellum cluster leaf against that clean and graphic blended background and okay we're gonna move on to card number two some more Simon's stamp tape runner to adhere temporarily my white panel onto the paper grid mat this time we're using the circle stencil set and this gives you five sizes of circles I'm gonna be using both the outer and the inner to create kind of arches to blend individual colored arches I'm gonna start with Mala blue and I'm going around the, the first card uses more warm tone second card using a little more cool tone and you don't need much ink it's very forgiving for these little arches and I like to go a little bit darker closer to the edge and fade it light lighter that's called gradient love okay then I lay down the next size circle which nestles just perfectly against the previously blended arch and then I take the next size smaller inner to create our next little arch we're going to ink blend with blue jay love this color it matches the uh, blender brush you know it's just so easy you don't have to think because you see the colored handle and you just match it up with the ink and uh, now blue jay is more intense okay you don't need much little dabbles do you again I'm going with the gradient love fading it lighter as I go towards the center and um, I kind of hold that middle one because I don't want it to shift and um, I've messed this up before I'm just gonna tell you it's my second try uh, but you know what you live and learn trial and error okay I'm taking off all the stencils here to show you what we got to work with it's very clean okay next size circle mask laying it down holding it down with the post-it tape and this one is using hot mama I love the name I love the magenta color using the purple blender brush working my way through the cool tone rainbow order and uh, just having a day I just love blending it's what gets me out of bed in the morning okay might have heard my daughter my youngest daughter Emma just turned 11 was it two days ago for her birthday present what she wanted more than anything in the whole wide world was a puppy and you know what the little girl's dreams came true two days ago we got a little puppy okay I want to show you another way that you can mask off if you don't have a bunch of stencils um, you can take circle dies or whatever type of shape die you want to use and then you can use some masking paper this is by Simon's stamp masking paper so it's like sticky paper that you can die cut to create your own mask so I'm just trimming this a little bit I will die cut the circle using my little Alta new mini blossom and uh, it creates a circle mask and I will have to say uh, first of all these little doodads are hard to get the backing off so I find what works best for me is little tweezers sticking it in there 
to get that backer off and then you just adhere it down right in the center and what I was going to say was the masking paper gives you such a crisp result probably even more so than the stencil so if you want to take the time to get the most beautiful crisp result try masking paper but stencils are great because they can be used and washed and you know they're much more durable so the last color I used was dull pink, which is a bright hot pink popping right in your face. Use those tweezers to remove that mask and look at that beautiful crisp finish. Now there's a little leftover adhesive that I'm using my adhesive eraser for. It also helps to remove some smudges in a pinch, that magic eraser. Is it called magic eraser? I think it's just called adhesive eraser, but I like to call it the magic eraser because it works magic. Okay, trimming this down, giving it a nice good crop, and I'll pop this up on a white card base just like I did on my first card, keeping it clean. And um, love these graphic rainbow cool tone arches. I guess they're not really cool tones. But anyway, moving on to the sentiment. This is the swoopy thank you by Kathy Zilski. Going to do the backer in vellum going to do the thank you out of more of that silver foil and then I'm going to stack it up because dimension is life. So back to the puppy. I didn't think it was going to happen. Believe me, I tried, but there was just no puppies in sight. I tried the shelter and it just wasn't working out. It seemed like a closed door. Then all of a sudden, at the very last minute, there was a lady living on a farm who had some little golden retriever puppies that were just ready to be given away and we drove on her birthday we had to drive three hours to this little farm and pick up this puppy and as soon as she saw it she's like he's a hank i think we're going to name him henry but you can call him hank and it was so sweet because that's my husband's father's name and he's passed away so now hank lives on and we got a little hank bassin and he is so cute but i will tell you we're only on day two and i've never owned a puppy don't know what i'm doing we're up three hours you know in the night i'm like a i'm like a walking zombie but it's worth it right so now there's the two cars i added some bubble embellishments on this one as well I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some helpful tips and tricks to use with your blending, whether it be with storage or cleaning, blending with stencils or masking paper, various adhesives, liquid, dot runner, and adhesive eraser. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.